All right, going to show you that the Catholic practice and doctrine of Lent is a doctrine of devils. Okay, what is Lent? First of all, sorry, according to the something in my throat. According to the Catholic Church Catechism, uh, paragraph 540, Lent is basically this observance, this abstinence from meat that they do, and they're essentially trying to imitate what Jesus Christ did in his 40 days in the desert, because Lent lasts for 40 days in the Roman, in the Roman Catholic Church, because it, what's Roman Catholicism? It's all about becoming an imitator of Jesus Christ. So that's what they're doing with this Lent thing. It's about becoming an imitation of Christ. And again, part of Lent is you abstain from meats, according to paragraph 540 of the Catholic Church Catechism. Now, what does the Bible say about this? Okay, Because the Catholic Church Catechism says one thing, that you for 40 days you cannot eat meat and that kind of stuff, and you have to abstain from meat, you have to fast, and basically be, try to become an imitation of Jesus Christ. But what does the Bible say about abstaining from meat and, and forcing people to abstain from meat? Well, let's go to the scriptures, something Catholics don't often do. Very, very seldom. I've debated Catholics on Instagram. Very, very seldom do they even quote scripture. They always reference, well, this church father said this, or this saint said that, or the pope said this, or whatever. They don't read the Bible for themselves. Give me a break. But let's look at the scriptures. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving, who, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Okay? And also forbidding to marry as well, I should point this out as well, that pretty much destroys the Catholic priesthood of forced celibacy. For, you know, telling someone that they can't get married is a doctrine of devils. Not to mention the fact that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, Paul says that marriage is actually necessary to avoid fornication, which actually would explain why so many Catholic priests get busted doing fornication and doing all kinds of perverted stuff, because they're forcibly trying to remain celibate, which is a recipe for disaster. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, again, I covered that in another video, the four celibacy of the Catholic priesthood. So, but what do we see here? Well, command to abstain from meats is linked in with the doctrine of devils, that the spirit speaketh. When, when, when you hear about the spirit speaking expressly, it's, he's trying to get your attention. Okay, he's saying like, this is important. He's speaking expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And then uh, command to abstain from meats is a doctrine of devils because God says it's sanctified through prayer. You see, we're not under the, the Levitical uh, dietary laws. We, we have liberty to eat meat. We just pray over it and God sanctifies it. Okay. Because Roman Catholicism is all about going back under the law. They try to get you back under the law. But let's continue on the thing of, of liberty to eat meat. Okay. Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. Another good kick at the Roman Catholic heresy and doctrine of devil is known as Lent. Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. And if you see me shaking a little bit, it's actually really cold in my room. We, did, we just had a snowstorm and the heater for whatever reason is just not, it's just not working. So... I'm basically freezing in my room right now, <laughs> trying to record this video. So if you see me shaking, that's it, <laughs> shivering. But anyway, Romans chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despiseth him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth judge, or eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. You see, when you're observing Lent and a Catholic starts eating meat, you know, if you're observing Lent, you're going to judge him and say, well, why are you eating meat? Why are you eating him? Uh, you're not supposed to do that. No, uh, what is it? Uh, let him that, sorry, let him that eateth not, not judge him that eateth, paraphrasing, of course. But that pretty much kicks the whole Lent thing because you'll judge Catholics who try to eat meat if they don't, if, if they're trying to, if during, I'll put it this way, during the fasting of Lent. Next, Colossians chapter 2, verses 20 to 22 describes the uh, vain man-made commandments and doctrines of men that is the Catholic doctrine of Lent, the heresy and doctrine of devils known as Lent. Romans, or sorry, Colossians chapter 2, verses 20 to 22. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men? You see, taste not. Uh, again, that's Lent. What is it? It's commandments and doctrines of men. It's the ordinances of the, of the world, you know? It's the rudiments of the world, that's what it comes down to. It's funny because that same chapter, Colossians 2 in verse 8, it says, Beware lest anyone, beware lest anyone spill you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Lent is not after Christ, it's the, the traditions and philosophy of the world, of the Roman Catholic uh, mystery Babylon horror that it is. 
Now here's a really good, two really good scriptures that totally destroy lands and also destroy any kind of uh, these law, this law keeping Hebrew roots, you know, Torah observe and heresy that you still have to observe the dietary laws. Okay, this this these two scriptures totally destroy that too, as well as the Catholic doctrine of the devil is known as Lent. Acts chapter ten, verses nine to fifteen. Those of you who know the issue know where I'm going with this. Acts chapter ten, verses nine to fifteen. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and draw nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they were, they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw a heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit with the, at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the of the air, and there came a voice to him saying. Sorry, and, there, and there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, it's not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Uh, and the voice spake unto him again the second time, God hath to cleanse, uh, called, sorry, that call that call not thou uncommon. Sorry, common, sorry, again, not good at reading things on a computer, but basically what's going on here. And I, I've established on other videos, I just not, I'm just not good. The reason why I do it on a computer is, is just so I can navigate, navigate between verses easier. But what's going on here basically is that uh, Peter is saying to God, uh, these, these animals are unclean, I can't eat them. And God's saying, no, kill and eat. You can eat them. Why? Because they have liberty to eat meat. They have liberty, they're not under the dietary laws anymore. I mean, right there, Peter's saying like, you know, he's like almost correcting God, saying like, God, I can't, I'm not supposed to eat this kind of stuff. You know, it's, what does he say? It's, um, it's unclean, he says. And God says, no, it's not. You know, God says, God hath cleansed uh, that call, that call not thou common. Basically. So what he's saying is that he's cleansing it. And how does that cleanse today? Through the word of God in prayer. Like we read in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Uh, Acts chapter 11, verses 4 to 9. A similar account of what happened. Acts chapter 11, verses 4 to 9. Actually, I'll start at verse 3, because here's actually a good kick at also the Hebrew roots people as well. Uh, Acts chapter 11, verses 3 to 9. Saying, Thou wentest in to men circum uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descend, as it had been a great sheep, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which I had fastened mine eyes, I considered, and I saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls in the air of the air. And I heard a voice say unto me, saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered him again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. So, what's going on here? Well, some Jews, if you read in verse 1 and 2, some Jews actually came to Peter, and this is why I say it's a good kick at the Hebrew roots people as well, because some Jews actually came to Peter and says, we're basically telling him like, like about the dietary laws and how he's supposed to observe them and that kind of stuff. And they're basically telling him essentially to observe the Jewish traditions. And he rebukes them and says, no, God says that it's cleansed. You know, God, he basically explains to these, these Jews, they're referred to as the circumcision. That's often the term used for the Jews. And Peter tells them, you know, no, God, God is cleansing the meat. I can eat it. Why? Because you're not under the Old Testament dietary laws anymore. So... Uh, I mean, I guarantee you, some of these Hebrew roots people were back then, they would have probably called Peter a heretic too, but whatever. The Hebrew roots people, they're just, they're, they're good for a laugh. But the bottom line is, is that uh, Lent is a doctrine of devils. Because we're reading these two verses in Acts 10 and Acts 11, that Peter was allowed, was allowed to eat meat. Even though he told God, I, I can't do it, God says, yeah, you can, I've cleansed it. So the Catholic doctrine of devils known as Lent is just that. It's traditions and ordinances of men like we read in Colossians 2. It is not ordained by God. It's man-made tradition passed on by Antichrist popes who foolishly claim apostolic succession. Well, it's kind of funny. Oh, I want to point this out as well. You know how the popes say that, oh, we came from Peter? Well, right in these two verses in Acts, Peter just contradicted their doctrine of Lent because he was not abstaining from meats. So once again, Peter fails at being a pope. So... Again, Acts chapter 10, verse 9 to 15, Acts chapter 11, verse 4 to 9, Peter contradicts the Catholic doctrine of Lent. So, so much for being, Peter being the first pope. But anyway, don't be deceived by the Catholic heresy of Lent. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.